Hey everyone, Jess and Al from thesitecollective.com and today we're going to talk to you about the way that different types of medication has an impact on sensitivity, arousal and motivation. This is an extract out of our latest book, The Depression Solution. Talk to us about medication. How does it work? How does it because work? Because it doesn't okay. actually make you less depressed. No. So look, the, the antidepressant medications, the one that funnily enough most commonly prescribed for depression. Yes. Generally speaking, what they do is they work on a neurotransmitter called serotonin. Yeah, serotonin. And the impact of increasing your serotonin, which is more or less what most of them do, is they make you less sensitive to stuff. So things don't get under your skin and you don't experience so much negative emotion. Less negative emotion means it doesn't feel like the world's a disaster the whole time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we've done here, what I've tried to do here is sort of unpack how different medications that affect mood and mental health, how they sort of work. It's not fully comprehensive, obviously, all right, but it give you a bit of a flavor of things just to orientate yourself to it all. So let's work through some of this stuff, okay? So essentially there's five dials, that's the way I think about it. There's mm -hmm. five dials that you can tweak. There's the serotonin dial, which tweaks your sensitivity, mm -hmm. okay? Less sensitive, things are not too bad. More sensitive, ah! There's the noradrenaline dial, noradrenaline. So noradrenaline is the neurochemical that makes you feel more mentally kind of alert. Nor yes. epinephrine in America. Oh, thank you, yeah. So a little example, um, I was uh, busily working away on something, you know, kind of getting a bit bored, you know, oh God, what am I doing here? I'm sort of losing track. And I realized I'm late for an appointment. I'm like, shit. So I'm racing out, I'm all kind of primed, okay? So the bodily arousal is adrenaline. And the mental arousal is not, because what I did, I was, I was too late. I wasn't going to make the appointment, rang up, apologized, sat back down and I was just brrr, punching it out. Okay. So that's the noradrenaline impacts mental arousal. Okay. So that can make your thinking feel better, make your thinking kind of sharper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah potentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it can also, if you're feeling anxious, guess what? It can make you mm. more anxious. Mm. Right. And this is a major problem with a class of medication called the SNRIs, which you talk about at another talk. All right. Um, you can modulate adrenaline. Generally speaking, um, what we do there is we modulate it down. There's some medications that block adrenaline and that makes your body feel less distressed. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, potentially we can also modulate dopamine. I don't really like playing with dopamine very much, but dopamine has impacts on motivation. Yeah. And yeah. these sort of medications used a lot more in treatment of ADHD. That's where you might have heard of them from. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and the last dial is the, the sedatives. So what the sedatives do is they turn the volume down on absolutely everything. Yeah. Okay, so less sensitive, less arousal, less bodily arousal, less motivated, blah, okay? <laughs> Which can feel great though, if you're agitated the whole time. People really like feeling sedated when mm. they're like that. The problem is you tend to backfires and rebounds. Yes. All right, okay, so dial by dial. We're going dial by dial? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so dial one, sensitivity. So the SSRIs, the SSRIs, here they are Selective here. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Thank you, thank you. I'm sure it's there somewhere. It's probably not. All right, that's what it is. Um, so there's, what is it? There's, there's six of them, okay? There's six of them. And what? And I won't read all their names. You can read it on the screen. What they do is they, they increase the amount of serotonin in your brain by kind of interfering with the serotonin recycling garbage disposal system. So it just sort of hangs around, okay? That's how it works. Um, so, so they, they all have slightly different effects to one another. I really like fluvoxamine because it seems to have this extra effect on something called the sigma receptor that seems to dampen down anxiety too. So that's the one I prefer. Um, it's relatively short acting, so you can have the night off, yeah, and you can recover. So I like that as well. And when I get into the rest of them, there's 40 oxytocin. And of course, the sedatives will reduce your sensitivity too. So that's dial one, okay? Um, let's go for dial two, mental arousal. I feel a bit mentally aroused now. I'm what noticing. do you reckon? Yeah, okay. So that's the noradrenaline. That's the noradrenaline um, neurochemical that makes you feel more aroused. I must have a bit punching through my system right now. So you might have heard of the SNRIs, which stands for? Serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. Yes, wonderful, thank you. Okay, um, so here they are here. Um, I'm, look, I'm not a big fan of these medications at all. And we've got all. another talk yeah. to explain why you're not yeah, a big fan. Yeah, I'm not. But the problem is they, they can increase anxiety as well. And what, what tends to happen, at low doses, it's not really a problem. But when you go back because, oh, geez, I'm still depressed, doc. Yeah, doc's like, oh, yes, you need a higher dose. Um, you start getting a lot of noradrenaline getting punched up. So it's hard to relax. You tend to feel, if, if something small happens, you can really lose it. 
Yeah? yeah. So I don't like them, and they're hell to get off. Hell. So I'm not a fan, as you can tell. Um, there is the Reboxetine, hardly ever prescribed, except by me these days. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind prescribing a bit of this. What I do is I, I use this as a little add-on. So instead of having an SSRI and an SNRI, or noradrenergic thing, in a combined med, you have your SSRI, and then on the day where you're not anxious, but you've got no mojo, ah. you can take the Reboxetine and it sort of gets you moving. Right, because it doesn't, it's, okay, so it's not an SSRI, like it's just... The yeah. NRI. Yeah, right, it's a okay. pure NRI, yeah. Can we just say that we have absolutely no links to pharmaceutical companies whatsoever and this is just purely yeah. based on yeah. your prescribing They don't like us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like us. That's fine. All right. Uh, and, look, and, and there's others as well that will increase um, noradrenaline, get, get you going. So Ago, Melatine, Valdoxin, we'll do it indirectly. I'm not a huge fan of that med either. Um, Dexamphetamine will punch it pretty hard, yeah. but that's not, you know, that... That's kind of the use of it. Um, then something like clonidine will actually go the other way. It'll reduce it. Mm. So let's say you can't sleep at night. Your brain's really aroused. You've got PTSD or something and you've got thoughts and nightmares. Well, the clonidine's really good at reducing that. Yep. Okay, so I quite like clonidine. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, and of course, the sedatives. sedatives. They just yep. dampen everything down. Right, okay. Dial three. Dial three. Bodily arousal, that's that sort of adrenaline impact. Okay, now generally speaking, it's not super desirable to feel hyper revved up when you when no. you when you're distressed or or you know anxious, anxious and depressed yeah. yeah but um just just for completeness sake so the the stimulants will certainly increase your bodily arousal so people will you know often feel their heart kind of you know banging away caffeine will do it does it indirectly i, I just found this out recently oh, yeah, yeah yeah so so what caffeine does it makes you less tired through a different mechanism actually it blocks this thing called adenosine whatever but the reason why it increases your bodily arousal is your body's detecting it as this toxic so essentially you're having a stress response. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. So since learning that, I'm trying to cut down to one a day. Oh, man, it's, it's a struggle. Uh, but I'm doing it. All right, what else? Um, okay, so the rest will reduce. Will reduce the effect of adrenaline. So propranolol, I like propranolol a lot. I work with a lot of PTSD patients and propranolol is gold. What it does, you might be feeling really, you know, you go to the shops and you're about to have a panic attack. What the propranolol does is it puts the brakes on the bodily response. So you're not feeling so overwhelmed in the body. Yeah, I still promote a skills before pills. Are oh yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, 100, 100. percent I'm with you on that. But look, sometimes, sometimes to get the confidence to use the skills, it's handy to have a little bit of kind of experience with something like this. If they're in the pocket, that can sort of be it's a safety behaviour. It totally know. is yeah, a safety behaviour. Whatever, behavior. you know, I love safety behaviour. Um, so clonidine has a similar effect as does prazosin, and of course the sedatives will. All right, okay. Next style. Motivation and reward dial. So these are things that increase dopamine. So when you increase dopamine, it feels good. Okay, it's the it's the feeling you get from success. Yeah, that's how you naturally get it. Okay, the pills will do it. Now the problem with getting that from a pill, well, it's a couple of problems. The first problem is, um, up it is. You're feeling you're feeling the dopamine. You're feeling good. If you're getting that every day from a pill, you get used to that and pretty it quick. Jacks up you. Whole, like your threshold. That's exactly for, right. Instead of, oh, look, isn't that a pretty sunset? That used to feel good. Now it's like sunset, mm, yeah, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Because my threshold's up here now. Yeah, it's almost like you get a dopamine fatigue kind of thing going on. They, they Actually, they, they, there's, oh, there's some fancy name for it, but it's sort of a bit not mainstream, shall we say, which is fine by me. Um, so what they do is sort of, they talk about dopamine fasting, actually. So don't push the dopamine button, don't drink the booze, don't use the stimulants, don't do all that stuff, and maybe you'll start to enjoy natural rewards a bit well, more. Well, I mean, this is what happened that we see when we've got people coming off, say, alcohol use disorder, where the alcohol, because mm. I know you've got alcohol here, that used to kind of hit the dopamine threshold, and when they're not drinking anymore, it takes a while for that threshold to come back down to kind of baseline pre-drinking levels for months. you to go, oh, months. yeah, months. months, months. That's why that's why long stay rehab is, you know, three to six months. Because yeah. because you're very vulnerable um, when you first get off the alcohol. You want to light that thing up because everything's feeling flat. Yeah. 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 So hang in there, it will come back if you've experienced that dopamine threshold issue. Okay, so, so, so anyway, the, so the stimulants will do it. The, the, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, look, I don't think I've ever prescribed these, okay? Um, they're a bit old-fashioned and they're kind of like a last line thing for depression. Yeah. yeah. I think what happens is you get a honeymoon period off some of these meds. So they work really well initially. So people are thinking, oh, yay, this stuff's awesome. But then as that dopamine habituation happens, less so. At least that's what I've seen. 
Anyways, um, ogomalacine indirectly does this again, but people kind of burn through that pretty quick. Almost everyone I know who's started on ogomalacine ends up on the highest dose within mm. a couple of months, mm. and then it's meh after that. Um, now, oh, so they, they're the things that increase dopamine effect. What about what decreases it? So the antipsychotics, okay, that's how they work. That's their yeah. main mechanism, right? They make Seroquel. Yeah, Seroquel. We've done a sleep on. So pre- we've yeah. done talk on sleep and Seroquel. And yeah. Dopamine. Yeah. So the, the the bloody antipsychotics. So they use a lot now for sleep, which isn't great. Mm. Okay. Because what they can do is they can really blunten, really blunten your dopamine response. So everything gets a bit meh. All right. The good news is when you stop it, often you reverse that pretty quickly. People often feel very good when once they go off those medications. Okay. So will yeah. this kind of rebound be faster than alcohol? You reckon? In terms of getting I, I think it that depends on how back. long. I think it depends on how long you're on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Duration. Yeah. As well as but it seems like I, I I literally have had people tell me that within a week of stopping something like Seroquel for sleep. Now maybe you're taking Seroquel for a different reason. So you know. Talk to your yeah, yeah, GP, all that, prescriber yeah, yeah, before all you that, change. Yeah. But if you're just taking it purely for sleep, there's other ways to go. And we talk about that in some of our other talks. Um, but antipsychotics for sleep, you're blocking your dopamine? I don't, I don't think so. Um, sedation. Okay, there's heaps of sedation things. Okay, they, and they all have slightly different mechanisms. So, yeah, alcohol, obviously, you know, you drink too much, you pass out. Um, the benzodiazepines, you know... They're very, people do like these medications a lot. The problem is you do habituate to them quickly, it means the dose goes up, which means you have a rebound and withdrawal when you stop. But trying to actually stop benzos is hell. Yeah, trying to, stop, trying to stop severe alcohol is hell too. Yeah, it's all, it's true. all, it's all difficult. Yeah, okay. Um, now, I, I will prescribe a little bit of antihistamine for people um, when they're having trouble getting to sleep. It, it, it actually reduces wakefulness, has a different mechanism. Yep. Yeah, because you've stopped, pers- like you, instead of Seroquel, you'd swap it for an antihistamine, because the sedating mechanism is quite similar, but it doesn't have the dopamine side effects with the antihistamines versus Yeah, yeah well remembered, Seroquel. well remembered, I'm impressed. I was there <laughs> I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Okay, yeah, so look, I don't mind those, but again, I don't like any of these seven nights a week, you're gonna get used to it, yeah. okay? So I usually tell my people, look, four nights a week max, and you can often start with a quarter or a half a tablet, and that's sustainable if you're only doing it four nights a week. Mm. So I don't mind that. Uh, the tricyclists, so they're an antidepressant, so they do, we didn't talk about them before, but they'll do sensitivity, they'll increase your noradrenaline, blah, blah, they do all kinds of stuff. One of the things they do is block histamines. They make people sleepy, okay? Metazapine also blocks, makes people sleepy, yeah? Big side That's effect a, profile with metazapine, though? Well, only if you don't mind, like, really severe sedation and 10 kilos of weight gain. If you're cool with that, metazapine's for you, right. yeah? Uh, antipsychotics we talked about before, not a fan. Uh, are the the any any convulsant mood stabilizers probably fit in here? The way the way they work is they they basically make it harder for neurotransmission to happen. It sort of mm-hmm. gums up the works. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so a lot of people don't often really like taking them, but if you're really so usually in mania because in in mania or hypomania, your brain's firing like crazy, so it kind of just slows all that down. Yeah. All right. Um, do we have more? But medications are not the end game. That sounds pretty profound. It's the end game then. Mm. All right. So, hey, we're all about root causes. So that's our book. We've got other talks where we start to allude to root causes, but we've got a stack of stuff on root causes here. Half of the book's basically dedicated to how you can address the root causes of what's causing depression. And you'll find it on the website at sitecollective.com. Head to the resources tab. You'll find it there. Cool. Thanks, folks.